Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Rick, this is the Bearded Mando. This time around, we're going to be covering Bondo and sanding. And Bondo. And sanding. But, you know what? It can be a lot easier than you think. As long as you work small and work clean, everything else will just work out. Bondo produces a little bit of heat because of an exothermic reaction while it's curing. So if you work in a hot area, it's going to cure a lot faster. So you want to work when it's cool. That way it'll give you an extra minute or two of, of work time. Let's get to it. Alright, before we start, I've got a little Bondo formula for you. B plus T equals S minus T to the power of B. What does that mean? That means that the amount of Bondo that you use, plus the amount of time that you take to clean up said Bondo, equals sanding minus the time that you spent cleaning up the Bondo to the power of the Bondo. I know it's a little bit complicated, but basically, if you keep your Bondo nice and clean on the edges and cleaned up in general, and you use less Bondo, you will have much less sanding to do in the future. So remember, you want to mix up about a golf ball size of Bondo to about a pea size amount of hardener. Make sure everything is thoroughly mixed up and consistent in color. Then apply it to your areas and use a palette knife, or in my case, a playing card, and scrape off the excess Bondo. So the playing cards were coming out a little bit flat on the top there, so I discovered that while I was trimming the back of the helmet, that it gave me the perfect palette knife. So I used that while filling in the holes on the top. It gave me just the right amount of curve to duplicate the curve of the helmet. Be careful how much pressure you're applying while you're sanding. If you apply too much pressure, you're going to wind up taking off the material of the helmet and not so much the material of the Bondo. So if you're going to apply a lot of pressure, make sure that you're just applying it to the Bondo. That way you don't sand any little dents into your helmet. Give the Bondo a chance to cure before you add Bondo on top of Bondo. If not, there's a chance that the top Bondo might shear off or crack if you impact the helmet in any way. I had a bit of a curve at the top corner of the cheek, so I wanted to get this more into a point. So I drew a line exactly where I wanted the crease to be. 
and using a rotary cutter, I gouged out said crease. I used a popsicle stick to help me keep the line nice and level. And I filled it in with Bondo and scraped it down. and then sanded it some more. So the top rim of the helmet was a little irregular due to my cutting. So I took my templates and taped them on to the helmet, making sure that they were nice and tight against the helmet so that way when I put the Bondo in there, I would get a nice level rim with the Bondo. Then I just filled in the gap and then cleaned it up afterwards. waited a day and then peeled off the templates and then sanded everything smooth.
So at this point, I've put on three light coats of the primer. And now I'm gonna do some sanding with the 220 grit sandpaper. Up until this point, I've done about an hour, hour and a half worth of sanding. You want to use a very light touch while you're doing the sanding on the primer here. If you go too fast, then you're just going to ruin what you've done. You want to go over every square inch of the helmet, making sure everything is smooth. So after that sanding, we want to clean the helmet off, let it dry, and then apply another coat of primer. Now we're ready for wet sanding. The goal here is to make sure everything is really, really smooth. We don't want any rough patches to translate into the rest of our paint scheme, so use your fingers to tell you where the rough patches are that need a little bit more sanding. It's okay if you expose some of the helmet or the bondo underneath the primer. That just means that the primer is doing its job, filling in the gaps. <laughs> 